Scrap is the main currency in Rust. You can use it to buy guns, copters, boats, explosives or anything else from NPCs or other players. Or you can use it to research items on a tech tree and then craft them. Basically, if you have scrap, you can do whatever you want. That's why I'm gonna share with you some of the best tips and tricks on how to get it fast. From the easiest and safest methods to the most effective ones, including scrap farms that produce over 1000 scrap per hour. I guarantee that even pro players will learn something new today. So make sure to hit that like button below and subscribe to the channel, it helps me a lot. With that said, let's get to the first and most basic method – component farming. There are a lot of different ways to get components. You can farm road, ocean, monuments, underground tunnels, underwater labs, oil rigs, cargo ships and more. But let's start with the simplest methods. The easiest and most obvious way is to farm the road, a network that connects the monuments along which you will find junk piles and road signs. It's as simple as possible here. Farm all the barrels and road signs, loot all the crates and then recycle all the loot. After you recycle everything, in addition to scrap, you will be left with high quality metal, which can also be exchanged for scrap in the vending machine. All of this may sound very simple, but in reality, it's not at all. Firstly, loot will only spawn on parts of the road with other players. Secondly, junk piles spawn every 30 minutes, which makes farming even harder. And finally, you are very easy to kill, because you can place anything along the road. So this method might work in the beginning, but after that, it's better to move on to monuments. As you know, almost all monuments require card to loot them. All, except for a few. And here's the first tip you need to know. There are a few monuments where you don't need any cards. All you need is clothes and wooden armor to protect yourself from radiation and a little bit of skill to get into some places. Let's start with the sphere. There are three military crates spawning from the top and some regular crates below. To get to the top, you need to use all your parkour skills. That's why you don't need any cars here. Next, you can go to the sever branch. Here you'll find a few crates that aren't easy to get to and a lot of barrels. Unlike a sphere, sever branch has a recycler, so you can recycle all the components into scrap at once. And finally, my favorite monument, water treatment. Here you'll find a lot of loot that easy to get to, even more loot that hard to get to, a bunch of barrels, recycler and oil refinery. And on top of that, there is almost no radiation here, which makes this monument perfect because it has absolutely everything that you might need. Once you have a good weapon, it's best to head down into the tunnels. After all, by looting just one station, you will get a huge amount of all sorts of different components and other items that you can recycle and get even more scrap. But it's quite dangerous, because besides NPCs, you can meet other players and lose all of your loot. Or you could get a grenade throw at you while you're in the lift. And worst case scenario, you'll just be camped near the exit. So you need to be very careful not to give your loot to other players. Or you can switch places with them and camp other players near the exit. It's up to you. We've been on land and underground. Now it's time to get on the water. Here you have a few options. You can either find or buy a boat and go looking for a floating junk piles. Or you can buy a diving kit and go underwater to find shipwrecks. Each of these options has its own advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the fact that finding a boat is a very difficult task. And to buy one, you need to spend 125 scrub, which is not a small amount. On top of that, it's much slower than a big boat, so if you get chased, you definitely won't survive. Even so, farming scrub in the ocean is the safest thing to do, as there is a lot more loot and very few other players. But to protect yourself even more, it's better to buy a diving kit in the fishing village. It will help you swim underwater and save your loot if you've been chased. But also, you'll be able to loot shipwrecks where you'll find a lot more scrap. And that's where another problem comes in – is the sharks. To defend against them, you'll need a spear gun and spears, which will take you 155 scrap to research them on a tech tree. But again, it's worth it because you can find many more components and other items underwater. 
and the last and most profitable method is looting underwater labs. Here you are waiting for the same as in the tunnels, but only underwater and with much more loot. However, get ready for stronger NPCs, sharks that swim around the labs, and of course other players that will be waiting for you. If you can avoid all of this, you can get over 300 scrap in just 30 minutes after you've been recycled all the components. Of course, let's not forget the oil rigs and cargo ships, where you can get even more scrap, but that's much harder and dangerous. So, for now, we're done with the usual and most basic methods. Next, I will show you three farms that can give you a huge amount of scrap every hour. I also want to say that I didn't come up with these farms, so I'll leave links to the authors in the description below. The first, and in my opinion the best farm, is a horse poop farm. How does it work? Find or buy a horse at the ranch for 75 scrap, stick it inside your base, place a trough next to the wall and put some food in it, wait a bit, rub the horse poop, compost the poop into fertilizer and then trade it for scrap at bandit camp. Use some of the scrap to buy pickles to feed your horse and repeat it over and over again. It's really simple. Now let's take a closer look at this method. The most important thing here is sale gap. This is a restriction on buying and selling items through NPCs or vending machines. On modded servers it's disabled, but on classic or vanilla servers it will slow you down, especially if you are competing with someone else at the trading. Currently you can sell 68 fertilizers at a time and get 102 scrap for it. Then we'll have to wait for sales to recover. After 1 minute you can sell 18 more fertilizers and after 5 minutes the sale is fully restored. That means you can get 270 scrap in just 10 minutes and almost 40,000 in a day. Next, you need to know that horses can stuck with each other, so you can farm horse poop with a pretty small base. Now let's summarize. One horse on the ranch is worth 75 scrub. A horse makes about 10 units of poop per hour, one poop composing in 10 fertilizer. This means that you can recap the cost of a horse in less than an hour, and if you buy just 4 horses, it becomes a profitable business. Next we have a close farm. Here you have a bunch of options. You can build a huge farm with a lot of electricity, search for good gens and get scrap for clothes after you sell it. But again, because of sale gap, you won't be able to sell everything at once. But at least you'll always have clothes for healing. Don't want to build a big farm? No problem. You can make a small and compact farm that runs on a single battery and solar panel and takes water from small water catchers. You only need two lines of resources to build this farm and it produces almost a full box of clothes per day and you can always combine it with a horse farm. However, I didn't come up with this base, so you'll find the link to the owner in the description below. But that's not all, because instead of cloth, you can grow berries to make a scrap tea. But it only affects the amount of scrap you receive from farming barrels and has no effect on crates, chests or boxes. Barrels normally drop two scrap at a time, so the increase in scrap actually works as follows. For basic tea, you will get a 30% chance of dropping one extra scrap. For advanced tea, 100% chance of dropping one extra scrap and 20% chance of dropping two extra scrap. For pure tea, you will get a 100% chance of dropping two extra scrap. Now for the last method, it's fishing. You can find a lot of videos on YouTube with different shark farms, automatic farms, fishing bases and things like that. But to be honest, it's a pain in the ass and you have to sit with the road for hours fishing anyway. Maybe these bases and farms really help catch fish a lot faster, but I don't see the point. However, there are advantages to this method as it's an effective and safe way to make progress. But how effective depends on how efficiently you can catch the fish. Just look at how much crap you can get for selling it in the fishing village. By the way, if you want to fish here in the safe zone, Make sure you do it at the back of a fishing village and not on the side, because there's not enough depth on the side, which reduces the chance of catching more expensive fish. And if you want to make a boathouse and still fish safely inside it, you should build it at least 4.5 meters deep to catch small sharks and salmon, which have the highest grub trading values. So make sure your base is about 2 volts deep. 
if you want to learn more about fishing, I'll leave some helpful videos in the description. And hope you enjoyed this video. See you next week.